Hello and welcome to First Updates Now and on this episode of Behind the Bumpers, we are with Team 5951 Makers Assemble from Israel and we are currently in the Galileo District at Worlds. This team was a finalist at the Israeli District Championships and with their robot, which is heavily based around their elevator, everything from the intake to the shooter and the climber is mounted on it and it all works in perfect harmony. We're gonna get back into that on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So first we're going to start, out, start off with Lior, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the general design of the robot and what caused them to choose this way. Yeah, so all this year we got like two key points on designing this robot. The first one is like to keep it simple and the second one to be reliable as possible. What gave us the opportunity to finish the robot in week three and to maximize the robot potential, make it uh, like the best robot, like, make the best from, the, from this concept and uh, put a lot of emphasis in uh, modularity and the uh, programming. So in the drivetrain we got like the uh, Swerve models MK4i by SDS and to make it uh, much more robust we got our belly pen uh, uh, right uh, down uh, which make the whole robot uh, much more strong. So moving to the intake, um, this year we choose to do like over the bumper intake uh, what makes this uh, much more wide, wide and, uh, and the drive team can see what happened in the intake and because we don't, we have much more experience with that and to center this, uh, this the, the note when it's intake in the side of the intake we got like this three uh, 3d printed uh, uh, parts that we uh, design in-house and that is that have been gone under a lot of iteration and uh, you can see much more of this like in our open alliance we're open alliance team um, um, in the intake, we had uh, uh, special things that we call it uh, like mechanical fuse. They all intake uh, connected to the conveyor by these shafts and not like with the uh, with threads, because uh, we wanted that the when robot when other robot bumps us very hard, um, these ones get to uh, take the impact and and uh, not the whole uh, plate gonna break, just little uh, axis gonna shaft gonna bend a little bit. And it's so easy to change them. We can change them like in less than a minute. So uh, it's very helpful. This year we put a lot of emphasis on uh, modularity and take uh, uh, take key points from the mechanical industry that makes our robot the best. Uh, moving to the elevator, Ben can explain you much better. So as Mary said, uh, the main part of our robot is our elevator. Uh, when we intake a note, there is beam brake sensor is in the conveyor that states that we have the note and then the elevator, the carriage goes up and we can drive around the fold without freeing off, breaking our intake. So, so let's demonstrate. So as you can see, the note centralizes, goes down to the point we're not touching the shooter and then the elevator goes up and this actually is in the bumper zone, so we're not afraid other robot will bump us. Uh, the, the, the ac actually, the elevator is driven by this gearbox down here. It's powered with two Krakens with a gear ratio of 11.5 to 1. Um, it's driven by this chain. Uh, there is a really cool part up here that we manufacture ours. Uh, this is a 3D printed to, dem to demonstrate this part. Uh, that's all with our elevator. This is the part, as you can see. Like you said, 100% of our parts is manufactured, manufactured at house. So moving on to the notes path. 
when the note is here, we are able to shoot it both to the amp and both to the shooter. So to score in the amp, we get the elevator up. Okay, God will demonstrate. And then we just spin the upper rollers and the note goes straight down to uh, the amp scoring. Uh, to shoot the note, we actually use the same rollers, but we power them with two different motors to control the angle which the note is being shot at, okay? We don't have a lot of range, but we can call, control the range we are shooting at at the best rate because we can control these two, these two rollers and these two rollers separately. Do you guys shoot at the same height that you use the amp mechanism? No. Or, oh. God will demonstrate the height that we shoot at. It will be pretty rough. Okay, so it's really fast because that is like the normal shooting when we shoot close to the subwoofer. Um, as you can see, the height is like really, really close to the height that we're swerving at around the fold, so we can get under the stage really easily. That's really cool. I like the fact that the amp distance and the shooting distance up up the elevator is different. I think that that's a cool touch. So Why? more about the climber. Um, as you can see, the climber is also connected to the uh, to the to the carriage uh, because our elevator is our main part of this robot. So when uh, we want to climb, the whole uh, elevator goes up. Uh, the change gets in here, and then. Uh, the old elevator pull down the carriage and the old robots goes up. As you can see here, we got this uh, 3D printed uh, part, like a one-way door. And um, this is 3D printed because uh, if if something don't going well uh, in the climbing, we, we wanted that this is going to take the impact and break and not the whole uh, hook, which is very, very uh, easy to replace. And like uh, in the intake, it's a mechanical fuse. Um, that helps the pit crew um, much to, uh, to, to to get the robot uh, back from the matches. So moving to the program, Gal uh, will explain you. Ah uh, yes, can I ask you a question about your? Can I ask you a question about your programming section? Yeah, sure. I've noticed you have quite a few LEDs on there, and with a robot that has a moving elevator that changes between amps and shooting, does the LEDs play any chance in that, or any of your cameras and stuff like that? Yeah, so we actually have uh, an, a lot of LEDs on the robot, which indicates the state of the robot of each subsystem. Uh, so the drive team and even the guys uh, at the source, the HP, can know the, the state of the robot and uh, what he's going to do. So we have this default state when the robot is disabled, that shows us uh, if we're connected to the field, so we can know that. In the game, we have a few different modes. Uh, one of them indicates a note in the robot. Other one uh, uh, indicates that we're in a range. Uh, we also have two modes for if we want to intake source uh, or ground. Uh, so we mainly use the LEDs to show the status of the robot to the field personnel. That's cool, yeah. Tell me a little bit about the camera you got on there. Lime. So, yeah, uh, we have actually one limelight camera which we use to do a uh, full field uh, localization. Uh, we use the data of the localization uh, as well from the wheel encoders. We fuse that with the limelight and we get a pose of the robot. We can use the pose of the robot to uh, start any actions uh, automatically in the field. So, like uh, if you are in a central range, um, the, no, the shooter will start warming up uh, so we can shoot faster and we also use the localization uh, for our shooting automation uh, which is very unique. Wow, that has been very impressive. Thank you so much for Team 5951 Makers Assemble for allowing us to interview you guys and I wish you the best of luck in the rest of your competition. Good luck. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.